What's going on guys, Jake here from The Fly Fiend. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're gonna be tying up a nymph. Uh, this one in particular is called a stun gun. I kind of came up with this idea uh, about a month ago, um, this pattern in general, and uh, I've kind of been tuning it recently, um, adding a couple different materials, changing some out, and I really like this final um, kind of pattern. I'm done playing with it. Um, this is it. I've been fishing it probably the last, I don't know, dozen times I've been out and I just have these full in my box and they've just been catching me lots of fish lately. So I thought I would share the pattern with you guys. Hopefully you guys tie a couple up. Let me know if you catch any fish on them. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So the hook we have in the vise right now is our Fly Fiend jig hook. This is a size 14 and I have that paired up with a gold three millimeter slotted tungsten bead. The thread we're gonna be using is just some UTC 70 denier. This is in a yellow olive. I'm gonna start my thread right behind this bead, building a little dam just to make sure that that bead isn't gonna be bouncing everywhere while I am tying this fly. I come in, cut out my tag end. I'm gonna bring this thread down to where the barb would be on a barbed hook. I'm pretty much just the end of the straight of the shank. And we're gonna be tying our tail. And for our tail, we're gonna be using some barbed flank, some teal barbed flank, and this is in yellow. And we're just gonna grab about three, three to four fibers here. Trying to keep them as lined as possible. I really, I've been tying a lot of flies with this stuff. I really like it. A lot of my newer patterns that I'll be coming out with are gonna be tied with this. I still use a Coq de Leon a lot, but I just um, like the colors you can get in these. So I'm just gonna tie in a little tail there. This isn't gonna be big at all. It's gonna be roughly the length of the hook gap. So it's just a little measurement you can take to make sure that it's all your flies are the same length, all consistent. So for our rib, we're gonna be using some Span flex that I've actually barred myself because I wanted a little bit of um, black contrast in here, a little bit of barring. So what I did was I just um, barred it myself. There's a video on fly fish food. I'll leave that in the description if you want to check that out. Super easy to do, and um, you can kind of add this into a span flex. So if you're doing like even hoppers or any other stone flies, you can uh, add that. You know, super easy to do as long as you have a marker. So I'm just gonna tie that in, pull pretty tight on the span flex and bring that down to my tail. I'm gonna bring this up. I can pull on my little tag end here. And I'm gonna cut it out so it's nice and flush if I can get my finger on it. Usually I leave it a little bit longer, just like so. So at this point, we're gonna be using some Vivis Body Quill. This is a BQ13 color, and I have this on a bobbin. It's really easy to tie this stuff in and use it as a thread. So what I'm gonna do is actually tie my first thread down there, then I can just come in and cut it out, then we can reattach it after I build this body up. So I'm just cutting that out. I'm just gonna grab this body quill. Lays nice and flat. And we're just gonna build up our body. Come down a bit. Keep it pretty slender. Just like so. I'm just gonna throw a little two turn whip finish right behind that bead. that I can just cut it out. I like to cut this out before I bring my rib up because I like to um, crank down pretty hard on that rib and this stuff, it's, um, it's just not strong enough to uh, put some nice thread cranks down onto it, so that's why I do that. So I can just retie in Grab this 
span flex. And I'm just going to make open spiral wraps of this body. I'm not putting too much pressure on it because I want it to have just a little bit of segmentation just like so. As you can see there's a little bit of black in there. I just wanted just a little bit of uh, contrast between the body and the uh, the rib. You could use like a black black ribbing or something like that but I just like uh, the look of this a lot better. This looks a little bit more natural just because it kind of blends together. So I'm just going to get a, a little bit of Loon Outdoors fluorescing UV clear fly finish. I'm just going to put this over this body here. And you don't need a lot. I'm pretty much just covering the um, the Vivas body quill because it becomes a little bit translucent when you put this on it. So I'm just going to grab my light here. Just hit that. So that Vivas body quill becomes a little bit translucent and I don't put as much on just so you can still see the rib um, kind of segment. So it turns out pretty nice. I like how it looks. Just carrying that up nice. Now for our wing case, that's where we're going to be tying in next. I'm just going to be using some black goose biots. Now I'm going to grab two of these and I'm going to tie them in with the curvature pointing up. So when I pull these forward for the wing case that the um, the curvature is laying down. So I'm going to tie these in kind of as you would a coronamid. Um, this is kind of where the name came from, the stun gun, because um, it kind of looks like a front of a stun gun when you pull them over. So that's kind of where I came up with the name. So I'm just going to tie this other one in. And I'll show you once I kind of pull them on a little bit what they what they look like. So you can see there, there's kind of like there's kind of like splaying away from each other a little bit. And when they come up, one's going to come up one side. The other one's going to come up the other side, just like that. So we're going to add in the thorax here. And for that, I'm using a little bit of Hemingway's Czech Nymph Dub. This is just a little hand blend. I blended a little bit of black and a little bit of gold olive. So I still wanted a little bit of dark um, dubbing, kind of a darker thorax, but I still wanted to kind of keep the, uh, the yellow gold theme going on. So I'm just going to dub up a little thorax here. Just like so, then we're going to be adding in a little bit of legs and I'm going to add a little bit more of this dubbing just to uh, kind of keep the legs from splaying out too far. So I'm just going to grab that same feather I used for the tail. And I'm going to grab about five to six fibers for the leg section. So I can just tie them in. We're just going to keep those about the length of the body. To the back of the body, sorry. So I'm just gonna grab a couple more here. Tie them on this side. Then I can just cut these out, my little butt sections. Then I can come in with that little bit more dub that I wanted to add just to fill everything and kind of keep these legs laying rearward. If you put a little dubbing in front of them, they just stick back a little bit more. And 
just like that. As you can see there, the legs are just sticking back just a bit. Now I'm gonna grab my wing case, take a, bring one up, get one wrap, bring the other one up, get the other wrap. As you can see there, I have one on each side and it kind of looks like a, a front of a stun gun that just kind of got my attention when I was tying it in. So I can just cut out those butts. Then come in with my whip finish tool. I'm gonna throw in a nice four or five turn whip finish. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now you can actually just fish it just like this, or you can just add a little bit of Loon Outdoor fluorescing flow on top, just to protect those biots from ripping out. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of thick here. Just build up a little protective wing case over it. Trying to get that on all those, both those biots there. Got a little bit on the legs, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna cure that quick, then I'm gonna come over with a little bit of flow and it's just gonna fill in kind of all the little cracks where the, um, the thick didn't get down into. So putting this over the dubbing is kind of, uh, it doesn't look as smooth as just putting it over um, like a thin skin or something like that. So that's why I kind of just come in with the flow after and just, it just makes it look nice. So I do a really quick quick cure on that. Then once that's cured, you're good to go. So this is a really durable fly. Um, my fish is right on the bottom, hitting rocks and everything, catching lots of fish on it. And it has done really well for me this spring. Um, it's an awesome little pattern. Um, I like this size 14, it's probably my uh, go-to size. I will tie them on 16, but I use this 14 as my point fly so it gets down. Then I'll just use like a midge, an unweighted midge or something like that as my dropper. So I hope you liked today's video, guys. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the fly or any of the materials, you can leave that down in the comment section below. If you want to see the list of all the materials I used on this fly, you can check that in the description. Thanks a lot again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.